Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters, co-founder and CEO of Brand Desk, where we work directly with visionaries to help build successful businesses and impressive brands. Part of building a successful business is learning when and where to outsource. The rule of delegation is a simple one, but it can make all the difference when building success. Outsourcing has become essential to many entrepreneurs, allowing them to focus on the primary objective of growth and effectiveness while delegating smaller tasks to others. Building a qualified team of professionals to receive delegated tasks is the secret to every business success. And on this episode of Build Your Difference, we'll discuss how to build a strong outsource team so that your business can expand efficiently. So let's get started. So why would you delegate tasks in the first place? Well, it, it, it really comes down to finding a way to duplicate yourself. In a lot of us, when we're beginning our entrepreneurial journey, we are doing almost everything ourselves. I mean, it is like a solo effort. We are uh, waking up, you know, we're going straight to the computer, we're making the phone calls, we're checking the emails, we're responding to the emails. We are uh, looking at the invoices, sending out the invoices. <laughs> We're checking, uh, have, have some revenue come in? What hasn't been paid? Who do I need to follow up with? Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff that we have to do as, a, as an entrepreneur um, that, I mean, it, it, before you know it, the whole day is filled. And so the reason you want to delegate is because you want to you cut through that so that you can really spend your time doing things that you really need to be doing and the stuff that that can happen in the background can be offloaded to a supportive team member. So what are some of those, what are some of those tasks? Well, the first might be making phone calls. The second might be uh, dealing with emails and, and articles and, and writing tasks. And the third might be data entry or spreadsheets. So let's talk about phone calls. Why would you want to offload phone calls? Well, some of the phone calls that I offload are calls that, that I'm, you know, where, where, where I'm actually making a call to schedule an appointment for another call, <laughs> okay? So if I know that I can just offload that to a team member and know that an assistant or another team member can, can contact a client on my behalf and can work out the, the nuts and bolts of scheduling an actual sit-down consultation or an actual sit-down appointment for me and that client later, that is an unbelievable uh, burden off my back and I know that it's being handled professionally. Another type of phone call that I find often does need to be made are phone calls where maybe maybe a customer uh, overlooks an invoice or, or forgets to pay, or maybe you're looking at your invoices and you see, oh, you know, um, uh, some customers uh, need to have a friendly reminder about particular, uh, particular tasks or invoices. Those are the kinds of things that you can offload to a trusted team member so that you're not spending your time reminding other people about tasks that they forgot, and rather you're spending your time uh, engaging with new customers or engaging with the customers who are present and ready to be engaged with while your supportive uh, team member and staff are going and sort of re-engaging with customers who may have gotten a little busy and may have uh, lost track of you know what what they needed to do as far as you are concerned so phone calls is a big big deal the next thing would be uh, introductory emails or articles now introductory emails these are things that I find to be very helpful if I'm engaging with a new client or if I am uh, um, uh, in a situation where I need to contribute an article or I need to uh, write a letter or, or even a speech or, or a script or something like that. Th that's the kind of stuff that really helps me out to be able to offload to a dedicated writer, someone who understands my voice and what it is that I'm trying to communicate, but also knows that I really just don't have time <laughs> to, 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 to sit there and, and wordsmith everything, okay? So, you know, writers, they love doing that. P people that have that particular gift, they, they, they like exercising that gift and using it, so why not give them the opportunity to do that uh, on your behalf? So uh, emails, letters, articles, these are, th uh, these are other tasks that are quite common that you might wanna consider delegating so that you're freeing up your time. And lastly, data entry and spreadsheets. Now, data entry and spreadsheets. I don't like them. 
I'm pretty sure if you're, if you're anything like me, you probably don't like data entry either, okay? Especially when you have a lot of data that needs to be put into a spreadsheet or a form. <laughs> but there are analysts that are really good at handling that kind of task, handling that kind of uh, situation where they have to you know, look at a, a large amount of data and sort of make sense of it for you. And at the end of the day, why do you need this done? You need it done because you want to get the big picture. You want to understand what is this data communicating, but getting it into something that can be uh, communicable, such as a graph or a spreadsheet, this is where an analyst or an assistant can help you. And so you want to you wanna look for opportunities in your day-to-day uh, -day workflow where you can isolate tasks and delegate them to a team member to free up your time and really your schedule so that you can focus on what only you can do. So I've said that several times now, focusing on what only you can do. But why is that necessary? Why is it that delegating tasks is necessary for you? Well, number one is it allows you to focus. It allows you to focus on what it is that you specifically do. So, you know, whatever it is that your business is sort of predicated on, you know, if, if, it, if it's on a skill or some kind of unique con uh, uh, um, uh, contribution that you bring to the table, this allows you to focus your time doing more of that and less of the other stuff. So, another thing that I want to point out is that delegation is something that does take practice. It's not something you're going to get right right at the very beginning because it, it, it can be difficult to know, well, what do I delegate? And, and is it, you know, it's just faster and better for me to just get it done myself. But you know what? It's a muscle. And the more you practice that muscle, the better you will be for having successfully delegated and the better your team will be from having practice receiving those tasks, completing those tasks, and sort of ironing out any kinks along the way so that as your tasks increase, as your jobs or, or uh, um, uh, whatever it is that your, I would say your business increases and you have more tasks that need to be fulfilled, your team is not going to be sort of shell-shocked. They're going to have already practiced with you uh, what it's like to receive tasks and to complete them successfully so that it's not a surprise as those tasks double or triple or quadruple as your business uh, grows and expands. Your time as a leader is better spent leading, okay? Leading. So looking for ways that you can lead by inspiration or lead by, by offering opportunities for your team members to support you is an incredible, uh, really it's an incredible gift because the more you do it, the better the entire organization is going to be. And lastly, look, like I said earlier, or what I often say is you want to duplicate <laughs> yourself, but there's really no way to do it. There's no, you can't, you can't clone yourself. We don't have that kind of technology. And even if that technology did exist, I don't know if it's such a good idea to do that. So you, you don't want to, you can't, you can't clone yourself. What you can do is you can help others find ways to support you in the way that you need supporting so that you can focus on what only you can provide to your customers and know that you have the, the support of a willing team ready to back you up so that you can be successful. Now, I want to talk about some of the, uh, some of the, uh, delegated tasks that are, I, I think, most typical. Um, so for this, I want you to think about just sort of a day in the life of an entrepreneur, okay? So we've got, we've got planning, we've got setting up meetings of any kind, all right? If there's a meeting that needs to be set up, that is something that can be handled by an assistant or a, a, a booking person. You don't need to do that. Okay, you don't need to do that. And it's actually a lot less pressure for you to offload a task like that for both you and the person or individuals you need to meet with to know that there is a liaison there that's coordinating all of this. Uh, relaying information or checking in on status, all right? So this means that if there are pro multiple projects happening and you know you need to check in on, that sta on those projects or you know there's uh, certain information that needs to be relayed to the individuals who are working on those projects, having that delegated to someone who, whose job it is to communicate that 
is uh, an incredible uh, it's an incredible support. I mean, think about change management. When something in your organization changes, maybe a system changes or a workflow changes, and now you've, you've got the task of needing to communicate that to your customers and to your team members. Well, knowing that you can delegate that to a specific team or a specific department, depending on the size of your organization, really frees you up to focus on the next innovation and the next uh, thing that really calls, you know, needs your attention while you know that your team and your customers are all getting properly briefed on whatever those changes are. And lastly, organizing data and collecting information. I mean, from time to time, it has been incredibly helpful for me to conduct surveys with my customers and with my clients to understand what's working and, and what's not working so well. And oftentimes, I have found that if I make those calls directly, uh, I, my clients will, um, they, they might not give me the, the whole truth of whatever it is they're thinking, whether it's whether it's positive or negative, I might not be getting the whole truth. Maybe it's because of, you know the fact that we have a, a relationship that uh, that you know where they don't they don't want to ruin that relationship if it's negative stuff that they need to communicate or or maybe they you know whatever the case may be, having someone who is more of a liaison contact them and gather the information or or, or gather the answers to a particular survey has been really helpful for me. And I think that that's something that you can consider too. If you need to collect information from your customers or if you need to uh, organize large amounts of data, that's the kind of stuff that you can easily offload and delegate. So we're, we're gonna take a quick break, uh, but I want you to stay with us as we learn more and more about how you can build a strong outsourced team. Trying to straighten your teeth yourself can cause serious damage and tooth loss. Moving teeth is a healthcare procedure that needs the supervision of an orthodontist. These are experts in moving teeth and aligning jaws. For more, visit mylifemysmile.org. Welcome back to Skills to Pay the Bills and this segment of Build Your Difference. Today, we're discussing how anyone can build a strong outsourced team. I want to go into some examples of how delegation can improve team performance. Number one, increased focus. Number two, increased task volume. And number three, increased capacity. So let's talk about increasing focus. Now, you're busy. You, you, you have, you know, your business is, is on a roll. Things are growing, things are expanding, and every day you find there's just not enough time in the day to get all the things that you need to get done Done. This is where you know that you need to delegate. This, if you're feeling this, if you're feeling that, oh my goodness, there's so much that I have to get done and there's just not enough time in the day, you know you're in a situation where your focus is probably being stretched. You might not, uh, uh, you might not uh, 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 have the capacity to do everything that you need to get done effectively and efficiently all in, the, all in that day done on your own. When you start feeling this way, you know you need to find ways to take things off of your plate and give it to your team members. Give it to someone who is willing to support you. You want to be able to dedicate your very valuable focus time on what uh, the, the tasks that specifically need that. And I'll tell you, for myself, um, I really only have about, uh, I would say, um, maybe four to five hours of real deep focus available to me <laughs> on any given day, all right? And I know that when it comes to uh, what my most important tasks are for a given day, I have to find a way to make sure that my Four to five hours of dedicated deep focus is spent on that, on those tasks. And anything else that doesn't fall within that particular task, I have to offload that to a team member because otherwise it either is not going to get done or it's not going to get done to the best of our ability. Now one more thing I want to say about this is your emotional capacity. If you find that, that you know, you're, you're getting kind of stressed out, you're getting kind of fed up, with you know a lot of the stuff that's going on in your business <laughs> you know whether things aren't being completed on time or or maybe you just don't have the patience that you would like to have for your customers you know that you're being pulled in too many different directions you know that when you're when you're feeling like that you know that you know what I need to slow down. I need to find ways to take things off my plate. That doesn't mean I want to. I want to uh, 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 stop 
accepting business. It just means that I need to now find a way to share that business with more of my team members because clearly, you know, it's affecting my ability to focus. Now the next thing is increasing task volume. So what this basically means is that you want to be able to take on more tasks within the same amount of time every day, okay? And this means that you're going to have to grow wide. You're going to have to spread the, the business horizontally rather than vertically. And a lot of times when we're thinking about building our business, we're thinking, I want to build vertically. I'm trying to get those numbers up. <laughs> but also what you want to think about is building horizontally, expanding that team so that you can take on more tasks, so that more things can be achieved every hour of every uh, of every working day. If you're the only person working on a set given uh, a set amount of tasks, or if you're the only person who is um, uh, dedicated to uh, achieving uh, the, all the tasks that need to get done on a daily basis, then guess what? You're going to feel that stretch, and you're going to feel like, wait a second, there's stuff that's fallen by the wayside. But if you can build horizontally, if you can if you can expand your team to be able to support you uh, by, by doing things that, that you find that you're doing anyway and just duplicating that, then you're going to be in a position where you can take on more tasks within the same amount of time and guess what? Your business is going to be better for it. And lastly, increasing capacity. And when I say increasing capacity, I'm going to go back to sort of emotional capacity. I'm also talking about business capacity, focus capacity. The more uh, your team is able to support you, the more you can get done. It really is that simple. And it, you know what? It's going to cost. I mean, it really is going to cost. It's, it's either going to cost you not to delegate or it's going to cost you to delegate. Oh, I mean, I guess, in other words, let me rephrase that. It's going to cost you either way, <laughs> okay? It's going to cost you either way. It's going to cost you in, in needing to expand your team if you do choose to be serious and intentional about your delegation, or it's going to cost you in lost revenue if you choose not to, because there's going to be a lot of business that you're not going to be able to accept. It's a lot of money on the table that you're not going to be able to take, you know, to, to, to take advantage of if you are not capable of expanding your team and handling that additional business. And, and the thing is, you know, you don't want to grow with the mindset of, guess what, when that business comes, that's when I'll go out and hire more people. Because then you have the, the terrible, terrible situation of needing to onboard those new, those new people, teach them all of your methods, and make sure that they are uh, well integrated into your team. It's better to, to start that process now at the beginning, at the early stages of your business, so that your business is kind of growing with you, okay? So that as you're, you're bringing in more, uh, more tasks and more volume, your capacity is also increasing to be able to accept that and to be able to make the best of those opportunities. So how do you build a knowledgeable team? Well, you got to understand what to look for when you're actually going out and deciding to outsource. So I've got some very important notes here. I've, I've, I've sort of narrowed it down to three primary points. The first is you want to find team members that are responsive and reliable. You also want to find team members who are timely and efficient. And you also want people who are direct and pragmatic. Now, I know it's a lot, so let's just sort of break that down. Responsive and reliable. This means that when when, commu when you are communicating with them, they you don't have to wait a day or two to hear back from your team members. They're, they're either able to communicate within the same day, within a couple of minutes, within an hour. They are responsive. They are responsive. You want people who are responsive and res or available to be able to respond to your communications when you are in need, right? And also reliable. You want to know that if they say they're going to do something for you, that they are going to do it. If they say they're going to have something done by a certain date and time, then they are going to have it done by that certain date and time. So responsive and reliable. Timely and efficient. They're not going to waste your time. They're going to they're going to support you in making sure that there's more time, not taking up time. And they're also going to be efficient in the tasks uh, in terms of how they are achieving or accomplishing the tasks that you assign. In other words, 
you want to think about looking for team members who are looking for the most efficient way to get something done. Okay, whatever that task is, they're looking for how can we be the most how can we be most efficient in achieving this particular task. Direct and pragmatic in terms of personalities, people who are who are going to give you you know tell it to you straight. Sometimes it's not always pretty, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's bad news that needs to get communicated. But you want to know that your team members can communicate that to you directly, confidently, so that you can get on with the business of solutions. And pragmatic, practical people who are practical minded. People who are able to get in there, roll up their sleeves, and just get it done. Okay, whatever it takes. Just if you got to make a couple extra phone calls, if you got to write a couple extra emails, whatever. Just do what you got to do to get it done. That kind of pragmatic attitude is really helpful when you're considering what kind of people to build or to bring on to your team. Another thing that you want to consider when you are uh, building your team or expanding your team is making sure that you're removing obstacles that take away or prevent efficiency. Some of those obstacles are uh, 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 unclear communication channels. I'll tell you one thing, if you're communicating with your team primarily through email, that's going to be a real challenge, especially if, there need, if a previous email in a chain needs to be referenced or if emails get lost or accidentally deleted. It really is a, just a pain. And I would suggest that you look for a forum solution like Slack. <laughs> Slack is a good one. Or uh, you know, Brandesk is one where it's sort of a forum solution. Um, or just a solution where you can easily track when each person leaves a message, the time and date that they leave a message, and it's all in sort of one clear thread. Okay, this is going to make it so much easier when you need to go back and reference previous uh, correspondence. Also, you want to establish clear directives. Okay, so clear expectations in your directives really make all the difference. So if you need something done by a certain date and time, say that. Say, I need this done by this date and this time, and ask the team member to confirm. Make sure that they can confirm that they understand that you need whatever it is that you said you needed by a certain date and time that they will get it done by that date and that time. I know that sounds redundant, but if you don't do that, then it won't be done, and, 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 and they will, there, there's always this sort of uh, gray area in the air that says, hey, you know, I didn't know it was due on this particular date and time. So take the extra uh, two seconds to just confirm things like that. Lastly, listen and be ready to clarify. Listen to what your team members are saying or, at, or questions that they might be asking and be ready to clarify. That's your primary job as a leader is to offer clarity, <laughs> is to offer clarifications. Don't get frustrated about that. Not everybody's able to read your mind. In fact, you know, I haven't met anyone that actually can read my mind. So I have to <laughs> be ready to clarify and to offer clarity whenever it is requested of me. Okay. The importance of developing workflows. As we as we sort of wind down this episode and in, in our in our conversation of the uh, of building an outsourced team, I want you to think about workflows, establishing clear and repeatable tasks, steps that can be easily repeated into documented workflows that pertain to whatever your your uh, your goal might be. Make sure that your workflows are easy to understand, that they're repeatable, and that they have a measured outcome. Uh, a workflow is important because it allows you to clearly communicate what success actually looks like for a given task. So if you want to be able to communicate to your team member, hey, look, this is what I need you to do, and this is what, uh, and this is what it will look like if you do this successfully, then if you can communicate that by way of a workflow, then this is, it, the process is just gonna go so much smoother. Um, and, and, and lastly, a workflow allows you to introduce alternative ways of payment besides just the regular hourly payment. Because with a workflow, you can, you can now decide, well, you know what, I wanna pay for the completion of this workflow. Not necessarily for the time it takes, but just for the value of completing the workflow. So that brings me into one last topic here, and that is how to render direct uh, uh, payments and directives. So the first thing you wanna do when it comes to directives is you wanna break them down into a series of clear 
tasks, okay? So every directive must also be a series of clear tasks. That is what a workflow is. Those tasks, you can choose to compensate your team members on the completion of tasks. In other words, this workflow is worth this much. This is how much you're paid to complete this workflow. Or you can pay hourly. This is the workflow and you'll be paid per hour to go through the process of completing this workflow. You can now have a discussion with your team members to decide, you know what, <laughs> um, uh, th now that they understand those tasks, how do they prefer to be compensated? Do they want to be compensated um, hourly or do they want to be compensated just from the value of completing the task itself, especially if they're really good and know they can get it done very quickly, right? So, you know, what, what we don't often remember is that the, the faster a task can be completed, the less money the team member might be able to make. So, oftentimes it's better to have the option to just pay for the completion of the task. Okay. I know we covered a lot, and I, and, and I, and I know it's a lot to consider outsourcing and, and building a team, but, but hopefully I provided for you some very usable tips. I want to thank you for watching Skills to Pay the Bills in today's segment of Build Your Difference. Building a business is challenging work, but it doesn't need to be difficult. If your vision is clear, then taking the steps necessary to grow is only a matter of diligence and commitment. And if you're just beginning, remember that you can't do everything by yourself. It's important to isolate the specific tasks that only you can do and build a team that can handle the rest. Co-founder of Perkbox, Chow Cho, famously said, don't try to do everything by yourself, but try to connect with people and resources. Having that discipline and perseverance is really important. Now, as you build your difference in the marketplace, take time to build your team as well.